Hey everybody, welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Day. Hope you liked the Uzbekistan episode. Get your Geography Now merch like this Geography Now t-shirt or this Geography Now mug at geographynow.com or get one of the limited edition Geography Now figurines that we are now selling at figgyme.com. Crazy, I am now a figurine. It's me holding the globe. Da -da 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 -da. That's so weird. Anywho, so as you know, there's a the part where we mentioned the small mistakes or the things that we missed in the episode. First mistake, we accidentally said the bird on the emblem is the national animal, the white stork. It actually isn't. You would think the national animal would be on the emblem. It's not. We'll explain more in this episode. Second, in the motion graphics, the Aral Sea was usually depicted as empty on the eastern side. However, today it is partially filled up. Basically, over the years, it has been filling up more and more, mostly thanks to Kazakhstan and their management of the Sir Darya River. Now, things we did not mention in the episode. First of all, if you decide to visit Uzbekistan, they have a very confusing entry and exit registration system. If you're planning to stay more than three days, you have to register the residence you're staying at at a government affairs office. It's annoying, it's frustrating. I had to do this for Togo, it's, uh, I hate it. Also, there was a part in the culture segment where Lana had some more extra information that she wanted to say. I had to cut it out for time, but here's a little bit of extra unseen footage from Lana. Women sometimes greet one another by gently grabbing each other by the elbows. And of course, the cheek kisses. In Uzbekistan, we do it at least three or four times. A traditional Uzbek wedding usually lasts for three days. First, you have the Kazmaj which is kind of like a bachelor party hosted by the bride's family, Kilin Salom, which translates to bridal greeting. When the groom and his friends come to pick up the bride from her home, they are usually greeted by the Yenge or auntie who is in charge of hosting a pre-dinner for the groom and his friends. The newlyweds will meet her again by midnight, this time at the groom's place. I don't know if I should get too much into details, but you know what I'm talking about. Thank you, Lana. In any case, with that, we gotta move on with this episode. So without further ado. <laughs> Man, this episode was so insane because like originally, I wasn't even planning on going to Uzbekistan. Geography Chachon was so insistent and actually pulled off some strings and connections to get me to go there. So yeah, with my mom. So thank you Chachon for making it happen. You're seriously, cra oh my goodness. Thank you so much, man. So anyway, with that being said, let's move on to uh, the flag, shall we? The flag is a horizontal tri-band of three equally sized bands of light azure blue with white in the middle and green at the bottom with red fringe lines separating the white band from the top and bottom lines. In the upper hoist side lies the crescent moon and 12 stars in alternating rows of three, four, and five. The blue represents the blue sky, clear waters, and the Turkic people the white represents peace and good luck, and the green represents nature, new life, and a good harvest. The red fimbriations on the top and bottom of the middle white band symbolize the power of life, and according to the government of Uzbekistan, the moon is connected to historic imagery and tradition, as well as being a symbol of the nation's new birth, and the stars correspond to the astronomical tradition of Uzbekistan, as much of the science was developed here in medieval times. They also represent the months of the year and the constellations of the zodiac, and some say they also allude to the 12 regions of Uzbekistan. Now, now many will say that they also symbolize Islam as well, but it's not official, but generally considered by the population to also symbolize Islam. In any case, prior to this, Uzbekistan was under the USSR, starting with the Turkestan autonomy flag in 1917. And then from there, like every two or three years, they kept changing up the flag every so often until finally 1952, they got the final Uzbek SSR flag. And also out of all the regions and places that fall under Uzbek sovereignty, Karakal Pakistan is the only place that is allowed to have their own flag as they are an autonomous republic. Basically, they have the exact same flag as Uzbekistan's national flag, except the middle white band is yellow, which represents the Karakalpak people and the desert. Prior to that, there were so many Khanates and Emirates and empires that took over. Too many to list. Just here's a montage of a bunch of them, and it goes on and on. This area was taken over by so many people, it's it's not even funny. It's, there's, it's too hard to explain. But one thing we can explain is the national emblem. The national emblem contains the two crops of the nation on both sides. The cotton plant on the left as it was their main industrial product that they produced, and the wreath of wheat on the right symbolizing the country's wealth and prosperity. The crops are tied up by a ribbon with the flag configuration with the name of the country at the bottom. At the top of the emblem is the Rub el Hisab octogram with the crescent and star in it, a symbol that is commonly used in Turkic tradition and is often also used to represent Islam. Finally, in the center of the emblem lies the Huma, a mythical bird in Iranian slash Turanian legends that is said to never touch the ground and lives its entire whole life in the highest parts 
shots of the sky. The bird stands in front of a rising sun over mountains with two rivers representing the Sir Daria and Amu Daria that are the lifelines of much of the peoples of Central Asia. Also keep in mind the Karakalpak emblem is almost the exact same except in their version they have only one river, the Amu Daria, and the ancient Zoroastrian fortress of Chilpik on the other side. And of course prior to this Uzbekistan had like four USSR emblems that pretty much had the same thing but with the hammer and sickle in place of the Humo bird. Done! So there you go that's pretty much it and with that being said it's time to move on to the next part you know what it is it's time for Geography Fan Mail Time! Alright guys, welcome back. As you guys know, we always have to have guest stars. And uh, today it's going to be who else better than Mr. Raouf and Miss Malika. Hi, you folks. may have recognized them. Okay, so obviously something has happened since the last time you were on Flag Slash Fan Day Malika. Yeah, what happened? Explain. So well, basically we got engaged. Oh, okay. And uh, how did you two meet, by the way? Oh. Funny question. We met through the Turkmenistan episode. Oh, so would you say uh, I'm kind of the reason this happened? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if any of you guys have actually ever met through Geography Now, let me know in the comments and then tell your uh, how we met through Geography Now story. And then maybe I'll put it in a social media post. Sh should Geography Now be a matchmaking service? I don't know. The new Tinder. Oh, yo. <laughs> Geo Geonder. After the Zimbabwe episode, I guess I'll be a dating app service or something. <laughs> That's how it's going to work out. Okay, so guys, as you know, uh, we always start off with postcards. Dear Paul, I am Sitia from Candy, Sri Lanka. I have been watching your videos since the Switzerland episode. I hope you receive this on on uh, Uruguay flag slash fan day. I just missed it. So uh, Malika, you did a little study abroad thing, not in Sri Lanka, but India next door. How was yes, that? Yes, I did. It was really cool. I got to experience the country and it, uh, it was basically like a two week um, like study abroad. It was so funny because like you had never even left the country. You hadn't even left the East Coast. You, you were kind of like my magic charm, I guess you could say, yeah, because like I was Domino. just on the Turkmenistan episode and literally like two months later, I decided to, you know, go on a rampage with like Europe and then India and then Uzbekistan. So. And it's been like less than a year. Yeah. Like within, yeah. So it's funny because uh, not only are you Uzbek and Turkmen, but you're also Canadian and American. Four nationalities going on. It's crazy. Uh, Our kids are going to be so mixed. Yeah. And you speak uh, Japanese as well, right? You're I really... do. I My minor's in Japanese. Say something. So I'm kind of shy. Minna sa konnichiwa. Rauf tomoshimasu. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Kyo wa Paul san to issho ni de geography nao no video i when he talks, you're just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's so attractive, that's why. <laughs> Let's move on to the postcards. To our Norway, and it says, Greeting from a Soviet mining town on Svalbard to you and your crew from Neil and Chara. Jora. Gora? Tara? Is that a T or a G? I, I can't, can't tell. tell. Well, it's beautiful. Svalbard. Thank so, you. Thank you. Well, I got two here. Um, one from Tunisia and one from... Pelesh Castle in Romania. Long view, uh, long time viewer, first time to write it. I've been watching since Azerbaijan. I'm a return peace volunteer. I went to the Roman Amphitheater in El Gem. Uh, P.S. I'm a French guy visiting Romania in August 2023. Uh, C'est pas, oh, oh, he wrote, he writes in French. C'est pas vaut la peine connu, d'être connu. Uh, it's a, it's a country that's worth knowing. Thank you, Marc from France. Uh, merci, Marc de France. Let's do a package now. Hi, Barbs and gang. I've been to Brussels, uh, Bruges, and Antwerp. Finally got to Ghent. My favorite part was going to the top of the Belfry, the tallest in Belgium. Uh, all right, I got this uh, from North Carolina from Ethan. Back when I was still very young, I would always binge the catalog of countries. Now, years later, I have written a book uh, of poems about the world and have and the wonders that lie within it. And none of this would have been possible if I hadn't discovered your channel. Wow. <laughs> it even says not for resale. I hope you all enjoy reading this book with love from, oh man, from North Carolina, Ethan. That is oh, so he cool. He wrote it. That's so sweet. Yeah, he wrote this book. Each chapter is written off of like a geographical area. So like Tuvalu is one chapter. Ice and Fire, that's probably Iceland. Ethan Ackerman, check out his book. Um, this is for Tarchin. I gotta show the, I gotta show it. Look at that. Tarchin. Art Dog Tarchin got a box. Oh my God, it's a world atlas. Holy crap, it's it's an atlas for a dog. Pretty. So you're telling me Art's dog is literate? Uh, apparently this person thinks so, but yeah. What up GN squad, relatively long time subscriber here. I first discovered your vid, the Japan episode back in 2018 and have since watched almost everything on the channel. You need your own affiliate link for all the major airlines since they've made a lot of money because of you and you might as well get a cut. Oh. Anyway, what I've sent in is a world atlas from 1958 that I found in my early teens at a thrift store 
store for $4. Wow. Damn. There's a bunch of interesting little things in here from the past. I'm looking forward to the future GN after the country episodes and wish you all the best. And finally, we have this huge box sent in from Per from Sweden. Move all this. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this. Oh. What? Okay, Atlas Obscura. Oh my god, I love these books. So it goes through all the weird... Wait, what's the theme of this one? Second edition. And uh, I have the first edition. I do not have the second, so I'm, I can't wait. Shows you all the weird things all over the world that you can find. There's this game too, love it or hate it. Wait, that's a game? Yeah. A Marmite game? How does it work? You know Marmite, right? No. Uh, it was, no. Yeah, you know what it is? No? You guys don't know what Marmite is? No, what is Oh that? my god, I gotta show you. Okay, wow, they they don't know what Marmite is. <laughs> this is Marmite. Without even telling you anything, I want you to try it. Okay, without telling me anything? It says yeast extract right here. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ew! What is that? They've never had Marmite before. They put it on toast, very lightly. People in the UK, Australia, and like New Zealand are obsessed with this stuff. Uh, I use this actually as a soy sauce substitute. Soy it sauce. does taste like soy sauce. You get your maracuya passion fruit. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got aguas frescas, frescas before. So did you love or hate Marmite? I freaking hated it. <laughs> I would though, only yeah. eat Marmite if it was like a challenge. If you like dared me to do it. Yeah, if it was like the cinnamon chowder yeah. <laughs> challenge. Oh, what if like you, if you fail at it, you have to take a spoon Basically, of Marmite. That's what oh, oh, yeah, that's probably, that's probably how you play the game. Oh, I know what these are. These are really good. Ooh, let's try some of the snack. Wait, hold on. I need to take my Invisalign out. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While Malika is taking off her Invisalign. This proud video is sponsored by. <laughs> sponsored by Dumle from the Fazer Company. Don't be dumb, be Dumle. <laughs> Battery is not included. Battery is not included. Yeah, exactly. We are not sponsored by Doomlay. I just that uh, Doomlay don't sue us. How do you open this? This is like black licorice. Uh, I like black licorice. I don't know if you guys do, but I like it. Um, healthier. Malik is very picky. I'm a very picky person. <laughs> um, do you want to try more samyaki uh, chocolate? Oh yeah, sure. You might not like the black licorice like that, but you might like it in chocolate form. My favorite ice cream in the world is samyaki flavored. It's a uh, black licorice ice cream from Finland. Let's all dig in. Oh, cheers. All right. How do you say cheers in Turkic? Uh, Oling. Olim. Olim. Yeah. Oling. Mm. Oling. Oling. And one more thing. What's that? I have no idea. I have assumption it might be alcohol because sometimes my subscribers send me alcohol. My dad gave you alcohol. He did. <laughs> it's some good rum. Wait, oh, it's champagne? Sparkling birch sap wine of Jomtland. Original recipe from 1785. I'm gonna have to save this for my mom on a very special occasion. Mm -hmm. I would I would share it with you if you did drink, but you don't. So we don't. you don't. Pear, you oh my, you win. You win this episode. Uh, thank you so much for all this stuff. And uh, that is Flag Slash Fan Day. Uh, anything you guys want to just say to the Geography Not community? Thanks for everything. Thanks for the chocolate. And hopefully you guys enjoy this episode. Um, and thank you so much. You guys are wonderful. Because of you guys, we got to meet. Yeah. <laughs> if you really think about that. it, yeah. Which led us to, you know, meeting, falling in love, and then pretty much getting engaged. Right. <laughs> That's a big yeah. deal. It's like... Yeah. The story, the plot thickens every time I meet up with you guys. Oh, All right, you guys, thank you so much. This was really fun. Uh, cheers. Until next time, stay cool. Stay tuned.